Hey YouTube, it's Tech Savvy Solution here, and I'm here with a full customization tutorial for the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, the GSM version. And this tutorial is going to show you how to get Jelly Bean on your phone, as well as how to flash other custom ROMs, how to set up your phone in order to do all of this stuff, and some other themes and add-ons that you can put on this phone. So first, um, we're going to cover rooting, unlocking the bootloader, and just installing drivers into your computer. That's the first part. And then the second video, or the second part, is going to be the actual flashing of the Jelly Bean ROM, or any other ROM that you choose to put on the phone. And then the third part is going to discuss and show you how to theme your phone, how to actually customize it, flash custom theme packages onto your phone, and deal with stuff like Metamorph, if you've heard of that. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and commence with the first part, which is setting up your phone and your computer to actually be able to flash all these ROMs. So before we do anything, I have a little disclaimer, which is I'm not responsible for whatever happens to your phone. This could go horribly wrong and it could spaz out, but um, that's your risk that you have to take. Fortunately, I was able to get through this with no problems with my phone, so it works, I can assure you, and I mean, all the other phones on, or all the, most of the other people on XDA, which I'm getting this from, um, their phones worked well with it, and they're having no problems as well. Some of them do, but we were able to get most of them resolved. So, the risk is relatively low, but in just in case anything does go wrong, we're going to go ahead and back up our files first. So first you want to get a micro USB cable for the micro USB port on the phone, and then connect on the USB end to the USB port on your computer, and then the micro USB onto or into your phone. So, oops, wrong way. Let me get that in there. And then let's go ahead and navigate to our SD card on the computer. So I'm gonna open device to view files, or you can go to start menu, computer, and access your device over here. Either way works, you get to the same place. So I'm gonna double click on internal storage. And then here are all my files. And you can pick and choose which ones you think are important, but what I just did was um, select all, and then I transferred it to a location that you know I saw was fit. Um, pre preferably a location that you would remember maybe on your C disk or something, but just so you have a place to put your backup files. So I selected that, I copied it, and I have my files backed up. I did that beforehand, so I'm not gonna show it now. But once you do have all your files backed up, we can go ahead and commence with the next step. So the next step is downloading the software that we're gonna be using to do all these flashing and all the most of the setups for the Galaxy Nexus. I have the link in the video description below, so go ahead and check that out. It's xdadevelopers.com, obviously, or you guessed it, because um, they have tons of stuff. So we're gonna go to their forums, and this particular thread has what we call the Galaxy Nexus Toolkit. And this toolkit is huge. It has everything that we need to set up our phone. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll all the way down until we see this red um, this red line of text, click here to download the toolkit. So you're going to click that and then click download. And it'll only take about three minutes to download. Pretty fast speeds over there. So once you have that downloaded onto your computer, you can go ahead and get rid of that just for now. You're going to open up the Galaxy Nexus toolkit. So when you have this toolkit, it's going to prompt you with a uh, list of models, and what these models are are settings um, to use this application. So you have to pick the right model so this app this um, application will work well for your phone. So if you choose the wrong firmware, then you know it's not necessarily going to work. So make sure that you choose the right one. A way to figure out how to choose or which um, model to choose, you can go to your Galaxy Nexus and go to your settings. And then when you scroll all the way down to About Phone, then you'll see your Android version. So in my case, I have Android version 4.0.4. .4. 
So that is the one that you're going to be choosing. As you can see, I'm using the GSM model, so I'm going to only pick the ones over here. If you're using CDMA, you're going to pick the ones from this list. So GSM, 4.0.4, and oh, hold on, it gets even more specific than that. We have to look at the build. So if we look at the build number, hopefully my camera can focus on that, yep, I have IMM761 or 76i. So this one says IMM 76i. I'm going to choose that one. And the way that you make a selection is that you look at the number that this name corresponds to. So in this case, number 6, and I'm going to go ahead and type in 6, and then press enter on the keyboard. So once you have that, you're going to be confronted with a main menu. And this main menu is arranged very nicely in that we can just go ahead in order of the steps, or in order of the numbers, and that will be our format for this tutorial. So first we have to uninstall, or sorry, install the Galaxy Nexus drivers onto our PC. And first, if you see here, it says in Android, which means we need to be in the actual Android system in our phone, none of this like recovery modes or flash boot mode, like we want to be just regular Android. And then it also says unplugged, which means at first we've got to keep our phone unplugged until it tells us to plug it in. So what you want to do now is type in one and press enter. And it's kind of important that you read what's up here in green. Well, everything's in green, but this first chunk of stuff before it gives you options. Because it has a lot of disclaimers and a lot of warnings and a lot of things that you need to do before you actually go onto the options. So, for example, you must be logged in with administrator rights to install drivers on your PC. Well, that one was like, you don't, I mean, I had no problems um, doing this without administrator rights, but um, to be safe, I would do that. And then, again, make sure your phone is booted fully into Android, so none of this uh, flat, uh, fast boot stuff. And then don't connect your phone until the drivers are installed. And then it says if you have any other driver packs installed, you need to uninstall them before installing these drivers. But I'm assuming that you are all coming clean. You don't have any other stuff installed already. Um, because Obviously, why would you be following this tutorial if you already had stuff installed? So, what we're going to do now is make sure our phone is unplugged and then choose the corresponding system that you're on. So, I'm on Windows 7, I'm going to choose number 2 and then press enter. And then I'm going to install drivers onto my PC. So, I'm going to select the 1. I don't know if you can read it, but it says if you get a message saying Windows cannot verify the publisher, then select install the driver anyways. So a dialog box should come up soon. And then now we read this and it says we need to connect the phone via USB cable and the PC should detect the phone and install the drivers. So right now the phone should just be an Android, nothing else. So we're going to go ahead and connect that. So apparently my PC has it. Okay, so a way to check that to see if the drivers were installed is to press the key to return to the main menu. And then it says if you see a serial number at the top, it means at the top of the main menu, then the drivers are all set up. So I'm going to press the spacebar to get myself to the main menu. And if you see over here, here's my serial number for the device, which means the drivers were successfully installed. So yay, we're all good. 
The next part is number two, which is backup or restore your phone. Now, we already did an entire backup for your phone, but if you want to be safe, you could select number two, and then we can, you have a whole set of backup options. So, the popular choice is to do an Android backup, which will backup your boot, cache, data, recovery, and system. That's fairly safe to do. So if you want to do that, go ahead, but I already have all my files just backed up, so you're safe either way. So if you have done this backup, then we can go on to the next step. I'm going to go back to the main menu. So the next step was made fairly simple by this program, because normally we would do 3, 4, 5, 6, but number 7 is an option to do all of these in one step, which is quite simple. So we're going to go ahead and do number seven, and we're going to look all the way over here, which means we need to get into fast boot mode before we can do anything. So we're going to go ahead and unplug our phone from the computer, Boop. and then turn the phone off. Okay, and wait three seconds, because if you try and get into fast boot right away, um, it's not going to work. You have to wait until it settles down. I know, I, that sounds really weird, but that's what happened to me before. Anyways, in order to get to fast boot mode, we have to do, or we have to press volume up, volume down, keep on holding, and then hold the power button while you're holding the two volume buttons. And you should feel a vibrate. And then, shortly afterwards, the screen. It's kind of cool, I guess. Alright, so this means you're in fast boot mode. Great. So now we can go ahead and plug our phone back in. And then when you hear that bum bum on the computer, that means you're all set to go. And we're going to go ahead and continue on to the next step. So, the next step is number 7, and I'm going to go ahead and press num or type in number 7 and press enter. And again, you have to be in fast boot mode before starting this process, or it will hang. And then, I'm going to go ahead and read this for your sake. Um, after, unlocking the, uh, after unlocking the bootloader, the phone will boot into Android, so we're starting halfway. And so basically, I'll paraphrase this, um, if it boots over again and you have to go into Android, then what you have to do is go to your settings and we have to enable USB debugging. So I'll show you that in a minute. That's pretty much why we have this tutorial so that when these things come up then I can show you. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and start. So we say yes. And here we go. As it said in this part right here, it's going to ask us if we want to unlock the bootloader. And we say yes, using the volume up button as kind of like a scroll bar. So, yes. Oops. And then we press the power button to select it. Okay, and if you can see... Oh no, disappeared. But it should say unlocked when we're done. So step two, setting up root on our phone. I'm gonna go ahead and wait until this starts up. Okay, so as you can see here, it says that USB debugging needs to be enabled, which is what it was talking about on this dialog up there. And once this boots up, we can get to our settings, and then go ahead and enable USB debugging. This is what my phone is doing in the meanwhile.
So this process may take a little while while it's restarting, but if you want, you can go ahead and fast forward to when it actually has finally restarted or booted up. Should soon. All right. So when we get to our welcome setup screen, we have to go through the setup. So just say start. And then I'm going to say, no, not no, no. Anything that you save here is probably not going to carry over once we flash um, Jelly Bean. So just go ahead and skip that. Finish, ready to use. And yes, thank you. And then now we're going to go to our settings. So I clicked on the application door and then just settings right here. And then we're going to scroll down on our settings to developer options. So in here, the first option is USB debugging, and we're going to select that and say yes. Go home, and then now let's look at the prompt again. Take that out of the way. Okay, now it's going to reboot our phone back into fast boot mode, as you can see here. Alright, and now it's finished. Okay. Now our device is booted up. And if your computer keeps on detecting your phone, you can just take these dialog boxes out of the way. And all right, so for step three, we're gonna rename and we're gonna rename the restore recovery files so that they'll work. Okay, that was quick. So the last step, if you had caught that, was installing the custom recovery, which is Clockwork Mod. So that is the one that we're gonna be using to actually flash our ROM. So yes. Right now, we have everything set up for our phone in order to flash the actual Jelly Bean ROM. So, why don't you go ahead and head up to the second video, which is the actual flashing of the ROM, and we'll continue from there. See you guys next time, or see you guys in the next part, and yeah, okay, peace out.